I'm here with Jonathan and Neil from Accountancy Manager. And today we're going to be looking at how the Accountancy Manager software can help save you time and improve the efficiencies of your practice. Say hi, Jonathan. Hi, Simon. Hello, Jonathan. I can't wait to get started. No, thank you for having us on. So it's time to get started with today's demonstration with Accountancy Manager. Neil is going to be along in a minute, um, along with uh, Jonathan, who's going to share some updates around what Accountancy Manager has been up to. So let me start by reminding you that these sessions, I believe the value of these sessions are in the great questions that you ask as we go along. So if whilst you're listening to Jonathan or Neil show you Accountancy Manager this morning, then what you need to do is just go to the Q&A box. You'll find it to the right hand side of your raised hand button at the bottom. Just click on that and pop any questions that you have in there and they should appear on my screen over here. And then I'll be able to introduce introduce into just interrupt uh, Neil and or Jonathan and ask those questions on your behalf as I always say I like stupid questions we like stupid questions because stupid questions are easy to answer so if you've got a stupid question please don't feel stupid asking it because I love it it's the hard questions that I don't like uh, but we've also got the chat box as well if you want to pop any comments or anything in there as you go along and Mark who is also on the call will also be popping some URLs and different things in there that you might need as you go through so without further ado if I could uh, find Jonathan please you turn your camera back on here we go brilliant so we now got Jonathan in the room uh, let's get morning started. Simon morning Jonathan uh, let's get started then uh, Jonathan I think probably the burning question that is on everybody's lips at the moment, uh, especially around a certain big company that begins with I uh, that bought a, a an orange company, um, is what plans have accountancy manager got or do you have any plans with regards to acquisitions or what, what, what are you looking to do over the next 12 months? Well, so I'm straight in there with, with, with the big questions, but uh, no, that's fine. Um, the, obviously, yes, we did hear about obviously the big news in the market recently. And, um, and that's the approach that they're taking, but that, that's not the approach that we're looking to take. We, 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 we love what we do, to be honest with you, Simon. We're, we're really proud of the system that we've been able to generate. And, uh, and, and we have no plans to sell. We, we just want to continue on the journey that we're, we're currently on and keep developing, keep adding additional functionality to, to accountancy manager to benefit our users and just make the product as, as best as it possibly can be. So that's, that's our, our, our aims for you know, the foreseeable future and we'll continue to do that. Brilliant. So it's about 12 months now, Jonathan, since you was last with us. Uh, and at that point, obviously, we had a comprehensive uh, demonstration of what the software does. But can you just give me some updates as to what you've been up to over the last 12 months and perhaps what you've got in the pipeline over the next sort of six months? Yeah, certainly. So, so obviously, the last twelve months has been um, has been interesting to say the least. For not, you know, for for everybody, both business uh, in the business aspect and, and the professional aspect as well. So, um, from a council management perspective, we um we we set out on twenty twenty with with some big plans to kind of like launch some integrations that we thought were going to make the product um, more attractive to a, to a bigger audience. But once COVID hit, we had to really reassess what, what work we was going to be focusing on for, throughout the year. What is it that our users really wanted? What do they need right now to keep them working at their, their maximum efficiency? So we really got involved with the users. We did you know, numerous user surveys. We got um, you know, user feature request groups going on on Zoom, got their feedback, and we, and we managed to put out 25 new features last year that the, the they're not the, the, the big sort of features that, that we're always going to be shouting about, but they were they were requested by our users. And the feedback that we had from them was phenomenal. They absolutely loved the additional functionality. They, they, they may seem like small tweaks, but they've made a massive impact in the day-to-day -day lives of our users. And as a result, the system is, is a much better system than it was when we started 2020. We've, we've made improvements to the speeds, we've made additional imp improvements to like task management. So, um, so our users are giving us more and more positive feedback all, all the time. So we just want to keep that going. As I said earlier, we're, we're really excited about the journey that we're on. And we just want to bring our users along with, with us on that on that ride. We um we've publicised our roadmap as well. So we, we recently put our roadmap and our, our you know upcoming integration intentions on account and web for all to see. Because at the end of the day, 
people ask us what, what makes council manager different and we hope it's the relationship that we have with our users. Like we feel like our users are really involved in our development process and really involved with the, 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 the people behind the business. And, um, and so it, for us, it, it's not a risk to, to publish our roadmap. It's only a risk if we don't do it. And we, of course, we do fully intend to, to deliver everything on that roadmap. So um, so we, we're excited to, to inform about our users about what's coming up. And um, and yeah, and by all means, always get their, their, their feedback and take on board what, what uh, they have to say about the system. So um, I suppose on, on, on that note, uh, that I might as well hand over to Neil, who can... Neil's going to take us through the system, show off some of this additional functionality that we've got and really show off the benefits that, that, that our users use in the council manager every day. Brilliant. So I'll get rid of my camera so I don't distract anybody. And it's over to you, Neil, as soon as you're ready. OK, thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Simon, for having us today as well. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen with everybody now. And what we'll do is we'll go through... Uh, a quick demo of Accountancy Manager, um, and I'll take care, obviously, to focus on um, some of the newer features that we've added in the last 12 months as we go. So to begin with here, uh, I've just started a brand new account. I'm just going through the kind of the, the setup process that you would have to go through when you first start your account. So uh, first of all, you'd add in your uh, user details here. Um, we always recommend adding a mobile number. Um, to your account. The reason is because there is automation that will send you a deadline day reminder on any tasks that you might have missed um, the deadlines for. Um, so if, if the deadline comes around and you haven't completed the task yet, it will send you a text message reminder um, on the day of the deadline to make sure that you uh, complete the tasks on time. So we do always recommend adding a mobile number in there. We'll hit save. Uh, and then the next big thing to do is to set up your email. Now, Accountancy Manager links in with your existing email address and allows you to send emails to your clients via Accountancy Manager uh, from your existing email address. And we'll also capture incoming emails from your clients uh, and store them on a client timeline, which we'll look at a bit later on. Uh, but essentially, it's a full audit trail of all the communication between yourselves and your clients. So we'll go ahead and hit update incoming and outgoing email. Now, you can manually enter your email settings into here. Uh, but if you're a Gmail or an Office 365 user, it's as easy as just syncing uh, with Google or Office 365. It's just a case of signing in uh, and it will grab all the settings it needs from Gmail or uh, from Office 365. Now, the Office 365 integration is a brand new feature that actually went live today uh, and it will automatically set up the incoming emails for you as well. So you won't need to do that part manually. Because uh, it's a two-part process. So normally you'd set up your outgoing email first and then you'd set up your incoming email by setting up a forwarding rule within Outlook or whichever program that you use. Uh, but the Office 365 integration takes care of that for you. So all you need to do is just sign in with your Office 365 accounts uh, and it will set everything up that you need. So once that's done, um, I would then want to look at adding additional users to the system. So I'll go into my staff menu here. And this is where I'm, I'm basically in control of my own users on my own accounts. Um, so if I wanted to add additional users to the system, it's just a case of clicking on new staff user here. Um, and then I'm on a demo account, so it's populating some of this information for me, but you would just go ahead and add in the name and the email address and so on. Uh, what you can also do here is set up things like user permissions. So by default, it gives the users full permission, but if you just turn that option off, it will then give you a quite exhaustive list of permissions so you can set up your own users accordingly and give them exactly the access to the system that you want them to have. So each one of these takes away a permission from the user. Um, so for example, if I didn't want them to see other users' tasks or other users' clients, I can turn those options off there. Um, and then it's just a case of... Um, dialing in exactly what permissions I want to give them. I can also, um, if we're going to be using the time logging features within Accountancy Manager, I can set up here uh, a default hourly chargeable rate. And I can also set up um, an hourly cost. So I can put in what they actually cost me per hour. And I can use that for profitability reporting within the system as well. So We'll just add that in there. And then once you're ready, just hit save, and that will add the new user to the system. Um, and then the next thing to look at would be getting our clients into the system, so our existing clients. So, so in order to do that, um, under tools here, we've got an import clients option. 
and we have a downloadable import template that we can grab from the system. And what we need to do is just populate that with our client data. Um, so I've got an example of that just here, which we'll look at very, very quickly. So this is what the spreadsheet looks like, and it's just a case of going across the row. So each row would be a new client, and you just go across and you populate all the relevant information into uh, the spreadsheet. So you've got all your dates for you know end of year, tax um, quarters, and so on. And you just go across and you populate all the information for each client, and then you just drag and drop that into the system to import it. So we'll do that now very quickly. Neil, just while that's doing that, uh, there's a couple of questions. First question, on those emails, do, is it just a, a global email address or can you connect every team member's email addresses or so do you have a help at or something like that? Each, each user, you can, you can set up any email address you want. Um, each user um, can set up their own email address. So it wouldn't just be like one email address for the whole account. It would be each user can set up an individual email address. So when, when they... Um, when you start allocating tasks out to, to staff members or clients out to staff members, uh, when the system emails them, it will use that person's email address um, to send the email. So it looks like it's coming directly from that person. And it and that's and the system is monitoring the incoming emails as well and making sure that the incoming emails are on the right clients. Is that yes. Correct? So what it does essentially is it looks at the sender's email address and as long as that email address is saved against the client in their in their details, it will log that email on that client's timeline for you. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. And then Charlie's asked, when setting up other user permissions, can you limit which clients each user can see? Um, so you can, as you as you might have seen when I when I went through it a moment ago, you can hide other users' clients so they can only see their own clients. So they can only see the clients that they're allocated to. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. And then Corinne has, has said uh, we we have a shared mailbox in three six five and wanted emails to come from this box and incoming emails to be linked to AM, but it won't allow me to share. Sorry, it won't be allowed to link a shared mailbox. Does that make sense? Have I read that very well? They, it moved up and down as I was reading it. <laughs> right. I, I, to be honest, I would direct that question towards our support team. Okay. Um, yeah, this isn't really kind of a, a you know support yeah. um, webinar as such. So if you're an existing user and you're having trouble, just just contact the support team directly there. They're very knowledgeable. We're very happy to help you. So. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Cheers, Neil. No worries. So just to continue, then we're going to import our clients now. So we'll just drag our spreadsheet into the import box here and click import clients. And that's going to drag out all of the clients on my spreadsheet and create them as it, as clients within the system. And we can see because I put the deadlines in for the different services, it's pulled in those as um, active services for me as well here, which means it will create the relevant tasks for me on the task list, which we'll look at in just a moment. Now, the client list here is a very, very useful screen. So you can do various things on it. So uh, obviously, you've got um, an overview of all of your clients and all of the services. Now, you can add any column um, you want to the client list. So any field that exists within Accountancy Manager can be added as a column on the client list. So for example, we use, we'll use notes as an example here. So I'll turn that on. When I click away, that's going to add a notes column. Here, and obviously anything that's been typed into that field in the client file will be visible on the screen as well. Um, and we can do that for, as I say, all of the fields that are held within the software. We can also sort and filter our clients in various different ways. So um, if I wanted to look at just my limited companies, all I need to do is under client type, just click on limited company, and that's going to drill down to just those. And I can go down even further um, and filter by service as well. So if I wanted to look at all my limited companies that I'm providing um payroll service for for example i can then go payroll and it's going to filter down to just those so in my example obviously i've only got a few clients it's just given me one client but obviously would filter to any that match that um, and the filters stack on top of each other so you can create some quite detailed views just by applying different filters on top of each other um, and what you can then do is bookmark those views because when you reload the client list it's going to remove all the filters and just give you all of your clients back again uh, but if i wanted to get that as a view that i could come back to easily i can bookmark that or we'll call give that something um 
give it a name that we're going to remember and then either select um, just for me or make it viewable to all staff as well and then save that. And that's going to create a bookmark that's remembered those filters for me. So I don't have to apply, you know, three, four, five different filters each time I want to get back to that view. I just have to do it the once and then I can bookmark it and come back to it anytime that I want. And Neil, just while, you, just while you're doing that, uh, yeah. Michael's asked, can you type directly into the notes column? On this um, screen. You wouldn't be able to add notes from this screen. You'd need to go into the client and then just type into the notes field in that client. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. And then Andy's asked, is it possible to export the data and the timeline entries from AM? Um, and I think, well, that, that question was asked when you was importing it on the Excel spreadsheet. So can you export it into an Excel spreadsheet? And then I suppose a, a subsequent question for me, which you might be coming on to, is whether you would need to do that or not. Um. I don't, I don't see a need to do it um, as all the data stored on the cloud anyway on our servers. It's backed up regularly um, and to multiple redundant backups. But obviously, you, you are the owner of your data. We don't claim any ownership over any of the data in Accountancy Manager. Uh, so we do make it very easy to export the, the client information. So you'll see on various screens there will be export buttons. So this will export the client data, for example. Um, and you'll see on the time menu, there's um, an export option to export your time logs and so on. Um, things like documents, um, you can do a bulk download. So you can go into a client and do a bulk download of all their documents and it will create a zip file with all the documents in and allow you to download them. But that's on an individual client basis. Um, if you wanted to get an export from the timeline, um, you would need to put in a uh, request with our support team to get that information, but we'll certainly be happy to do that for you if you wanted it, yes. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Um, you can also add uh, more detailed filtering as well. So let me just refresh the wrong screen, refresh the client list again. Um, as well as clicking on the underlying text here, you can also go to add filter and you can filter by any field that's within Accountancy Manager. And again, you can do things like um, exact match um, before or after a certain date um, and things like that. So it's very easy to put some detailed filtering on the, on the client list. So for example, if I do that uh, next return due, you can see we've got equals, does not equal before or equal to and so on. So if I wanted to see all clients whose next VAT return was due before the end of next month, for example, I could go in and that's going to show all clients whose VAT returns due before the end of the next month, for example. Um, so that is bringing in the existing clients. Uh, what you can also do, sorry, before I move on to the next part, is um, once you've filtered your client list, you can then use that filtered list um, to communicate with just those clients. So you can see we've got an email all button at the top here. So once I've filtered my clients how I want them, I can then go email all. I can write one email. So that could be about anything you could, especially with everything that's going on with COVID at the moment and the, uh, the kind of changing advice we're getting from the governments. Uh, if you wanted to send out updates to particular types of clients about things like, for example, um, the, uh, the extension on the self-assessment deadline, you could quite easily write one email. So, and then obviously type in the content of the message and you can see it uses these placeholders um, as um, basically to hold for different bits of information from the client file. So there's loads of these that you can actually use and you'll see them when we go into the, um, the templates in a bit. But what it will do essentially is it will generate a unique email for each client on the list that will be addressed to that client. So it won't be like a generic email uh, where you've hidden everyone's email addresses in the BCC field. It's going to generate a unique email for each client on the current list. Um, so all you need to do is just put the content of the email in, whatever that might be. Um, so your SA deadline has been extended or whatever you wanted to say. And then send that email and that's going to generate a unique email for each client. We also have added um, the option to SMS all as well. So this is actually a new feature that we've recently added. So you can do the same thing, filter down your client list, uh, but actually use the SMS all feature to send a text message to them rather than actually sending an email. So that's the um, existing clients. 
So Neil, just on that SS, SMS uh, aspect, do you have to have a, a an account to do that? How you, do you pay? Is it 12p a go? Does it, do you do that you, through AM or how does it do work? You need an account. Um, so we provide you with a mobile number free of charge on your accounts. Um, and then all you do is purchase the SMS credits for the messages themselves. They're not particularly expensive. Uh, they work out, you buy them in bundles. It's, it's essentially a pay-as-you-go process. So you buy a bundle of messages and they sit on your account until they've been used up. Uh, but they work out the equivalent of 5p a go, 5p per text. So, and, and so you do all of that for us, basically? Yes, so well, all you need to do, if you want to get set up with a mobile number, is just contact our support team and they'll either assign you one um, or you can actually add your existing mobile number to the account as well if you wanted the numbers, the, the text to come from your own mobile Be number. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So we'll quickly go through the process of adding in a new client to the system now. Um, now, if you were users of Accountancy Manager, most of you will probably be familiar with this, but we have added a couple of new bits in here that are worth looking at. So uh, we'll go through the um, onboarding process now. So a really useful feature that we've had for quite a long time is the autofill with Companies House. So we can just click here and we can actually search. If it's a limited company, we can search for our, our clients on Companies House just to make things a bit easier. You can search by company name or company number here, and it's going to pull in anything it can find that matches what you've searched for. So then click on the company that we're interested in here. We can actually view it on the company's house site as well to make sure it's the correct company. And then once we're happy, go ahead and select, and it's going to give us our list of directors. Now, in this instance, there is only the one director, uh, but if there were multiple directors here, we could then select the one we want to make as our main contact for the company. So I'll just go ahead and select Alexander there. That's going to drop his details in. Now you can see we've added links to do a AML check from here as well, uh, and also a uh, company credit check. Now the uh, the AML functionality is nothing new. That's been in the system for a while, but you uh, would have had to access it from a separate menu. We've now just added the link for convenience under here. Uh, and we've also added the ability to do a personal credit screen and a company credit screen as well. Um, so I'll explain the AML process in just a moment anyway. We'll have a look at that in a couple of minutes. Um, but we've just added these links here just for convenience purposes. Um, now, let's say this is also going to be a self-assessment client as well. We want to make the director a self-assessment client. We don't have to create them as a separate client later on. All we need to do is tick the create self-assessment client box. Uh, and all we need to do is put their tax year in there as well. Oh, the wrong year. Okay, there we go. Now, if we're going to be charging a fee for that, we can enter that here or we can leave it blank. Um, all we're going to need to do really at this point is grab a email address for the onboarding purposes. And then we're going to go over to services and we're just going to select which services we've agreed to provide to this client. So we can just tick them on. And then we can, there's a couple of different ways we can do the fees. So we can put the fees, uh, the annual fee directly next to each service, or we can leave those blank and we can actually just add in an, a fixed annual charge for the whole package or uh, break that down to a monthly charge if you want to here as well. What we can also do though, is use the, what you would charge for each service to actually calculate what these fees are going to be as well. So, for example, just put some fees in here. And then we can use those to calculate what the annual or the monthly charge would be. So all we'd have to do is just tick on annual charge, for example, and it's just going to calculate these all together and work out that that's going to be the annual price. Or we can leave that switched off and select monthly charge, and it's going to break it down to a monthly fee for us as well, which is really easy. What you can also do is, if you offer set packages of services, is create what we call a fee structure. So you've got the option here in the settings to build out your fee structures. Um, and essentially, let's say if you offer, say, a bronze, a silver, and a gold level of service with different services included for different fees, you can build those in the system, and then you'll have a drop-down box just at the top of the list here where you'll be able to select your package, and it will automatically tick all of the relevant services and drop the fees in exactly as you've written them as well, which is really, really useful. Now, what we'll see as well from the company's house integration is it's actually pulled in um, the 
company details. There we go. So we've got the company number, incorporation date, it's got the registered address, it's got the SIP code in there as well, and it's also pulled in uh, all of their year-end dates and so on from company's house as well. So this gives us a great starting point to then start creating our tasks on the system. So for the task to generate, it must have a frequency and a deadline. So for all of these services here, we've already got the deadline dates um, and it already knows that they're annual services. Uh, things like VAT, for example, that don't pull in from company's house, all we need to do is go in and tell it the frequency defaults to quarterly. If it is annual, you can change it. Um, and put in, if you put in the, the next period end date or the last period end date, depending, it will then work out when the next deadline date, the next return is due. And it will use that to generate the task and to keep the tasks up to date going forwards as well. So you just need to do that for each service that isn't pulled in by company's house. Uh, and once we've selected the services, we can then start allocating out the tasks to different staff members as well. So you can actually set defaults for these in the settings, uh, which will then obviously populate here with those defaults. But you can also override the defaults and manually select at this point which staff member is going to be responsible for which task. And it will automatically generate the tasks on that staff member's task list for you as well. So at this point, I've put in the bare amount, the bare minimum amount of information I need to create a new client. Obviously, if you were doing this for real with your clients, you'd probably take a lot more information than this at this point. Uh, but this is the, the bare minimum amount that you really need to create a client on the system. So what I can do now is I can add my clients or I can add the clients and also create an onboarding workflow task as well to make sure that we've done things like taking their ID, run the AML check, checks with the previous accountant and so on. So if I click there, that's going to drop me into the client onboarding task. Now, Neil, just, just, yes. before, just before you go on to that bit, there's, I've got a question. Andrew's got a question. So I'll do, I'll do Andrew's first. Mm -hmm. uh, does the system remember fixed fees when setting up the client fees? So as a fixed fee for that return, 75 quid, payrolls, 250, et cetera, or do you have to enter it for each client? Um, so it, can you have you, a default figure? You would need to put it in manually for each client um, unless you were using the fee structures where you build out your packages and then it will remember the amounts you've entered for each package. So if you had, say, a bronze, silver and a gold package with different fees for different services within those packages, when you apply them, it applies the fee as well. Um, okay. so but when you're, when you're adding a client kind of add on, on an ad hoc basis, you would need to manually enter the fees. Brilliant. So you, you, could, you could effectively force the system to do that by having a default pricing list and then you, you could do yeah you, you wanted to take yeah you could have default prices you could create a, a fee structure with default prices on yeah and then just apply it thank you um and then my, my question is what you was talking about when you did the vat return for example it was say 31st of march quarter end with a 7th of may deadline what, when does it roll over for the 30th of june quarter does it roll over on the 8th of may or the 1st of april because that have i asked that Right, yes. So I obviously, I there, I just arbitrarily chose a date for the end of the the, the, the quarter. So it would obviously, when you when you're doing it with your real clients, obviously you choose the the actual quarter end date, and then it would give you the right deadline date there as well. Um, and it basically the deadline will be the submission date. The deadline is when it has to be submitted to um, HMRC. Okay. Um, but it will start the reminders, which we'll come on to in a moment. The automated reminders within the system. Uh, from the quarter end date. So it will start reminding clients to send in their records to the accountant right. starting from the, the quarter end. Okay. And you, you have control over when those reminders yes. go. You're going to show us that you in do, a minute. Yeah. And then Tracy's asked, what does the client authorization button do on the onboarding screen? Tracy's seen a button that I've not seen yet. <laughs> client authorization button. Yeah. Oh, I think I know what you mean. That's for that's going to be for the 64A. That's going to be the agent authorization. Aha, brilliant. Thank you. You can actually submit that directly from Accountancy Manager to HMRC, which brilliant. I will come round to in a couple of minutes. Cheers, Neil. Thank you. Uh, but here, now we're on the client onboarding task. So from here, um, this task breakdown here is going to be your basically your onboarding process. Now, it's generating this from a template on the system, and you're free to adjust this accordingly. Um, so you can go in and edit the, the template um, if you want to change what these actual steps are. Um, and then just save the template and it will generate from that template every time. Um, so you can you can create your own breakdown or you can use the built-in one that we have already in the, uh, the template. 
Um, now, at this point, we can choose who, again, who we want to assign this task to. Um, we can set what we want the deadline to be as well. I think it automatically sets uh, a week, but you can change that in here if you want to. And then just save, and that's going to just create a task on the task list for the client onboarding. And we can expand that out there, and we can see the individual steps, and we tick them as we go um, as they get completed off. And obviously, once they've all been ticked off, we can then complete that task. We'll see as well on here, while we're on the task list, um, it's automatically generated all of my tasks for all of my clients that I imported earlier on. Um, and it's also generated new tasks for my new client that I've added now. It's flagging the client as a prospect at the moment because they haven't completed the onboarding process. So to do that, to get them officially on board as a client, we'll go back into the client details here. Um, and we would send them a proposal email. Now, again, this is generating from a template on the system. So you are free to change the wording of the email um, as you see fit, but you can see it lists the services. You can play around with the formatting. So if you don't want it to show the individual fees, if you're charging a monthly or an annual fee, you can hide those. You can also choose whether you want to show them including that instead of excluding that. Uh, or remove any mention of VAT altogether there as well. And you can do any combination of those three that you want. Um, and then the important part here includes a link to complete the online registration process. So what the client would do is obviously they'd open this email up, they'd click on the link to complete the online registration, uh, which I will show you very quickly now. So I'll open that in a new window. And then they would go through the process of signing your terms and your letter of engagement so this the first thing they'll see here is a terms and conditions uh, box now this again this is generating from another template on the system the template is intentionally left blank um, and if you leave it blank then the client won't see this it will just skip straight to the terms and straight to the letter of engagements um, however if you populate the template then it will show it and it will ask the client to, to agree to your terms first before it then gives you the uh, the letter of engagement so we'll sign that and then we'll go on to the letters of engagement so in this case for this particular client uh, because we've got a um, self-assessment director and a limited company we've got two letters so we've got the self-assessment letter first um, these have recently been rewritten actually so the, the, we do provide default letters of engagement within the software um, we updated them last year to be of ACCA um, specifications so they do comply with the ACCA um, specifications for the letter of engagement. Obviously, if you're not an ACCA um, accountant or if you want to make any changes to them yourself, you're free to edit the templates however you wish. Uh, but out of the box, they are ACCA uh, compliant letters. So this is the self-assessment letter here. So again, the client can read through uh, and once they're happy, they will go ahead and agree. And then you're going to get the uh, limited company letter of engagement. So in this instance, with the uh, company one, it's going to generate a unique letter for each client. And it's just going to basically pull in the services that you've ticked on um, when you're onboarding them. So each each service is in a separate um, box within the, uh, the template. And it's just going to generate a letter um, bespoke to that client with just the services they've agreed to on it. Um, and again, the client would then agree and sign. And at this point now, because they've signed their letter of engagement, they will be showing up as a client within Accountancy Manager. But what they can also do now is go ahead and actually register for the online portal as well, which will allow you to share files uh, and documents between your client and your um, and the accountant. I've actually managed to register an email address that already exists with this client. So I'm just going to have to change that quickly. Just while you do that, Jonathan, Jonathan yeah. uh, sorry, Neil, there's a couple of questions come in. Will you be providing a letter of engagement for ICAW? Um, it's something that's been asked. Um, I can't say yes or no either way at the moment. It is something that has been asked. Um, we, it's not our intention to necessarily have letters of engagement for every single accounting body um, available in the system. Um, it's just our intention to give you a starting point. So at the moment, the, the default letter that's in there 
is uh, it's the only letter there, but you can adjust it and change it accordingly if you need to. Um, however, as I say, never say never. We have been approached um, to do that. So it's something that's being discussed at the moment. Okay, thank you, Neil. Um, and then Daniel's asked, can you automatically create a client from outside of Accountancy Manager using Zapier, for example, from something like Pipedrive or Sales CRM systems? Um, short answer, currently no. Um, however, we are actually working on an integration with Zapier at the moment. So most likely, yes, once that's completed, that's coming in the next couple of months. Um, and we also um, partnered with a company called, uh, where are they now? Practice Web, which um, although it's not there at the moment, um, again, should allow you to be able to capture client data um, and then use that to create um, clients within the system. Excellent, thank you. Okay. Um, hopefully that's now updated. Just bear with me a second. Sorry about this. It's probably doing so many demos, you lose track of which email addresses you've used and which ones you haven't. There we go. That should be good to go. There we go. So now registered on the client portal as well. So at this point now, the client, you can turn this off if you don't want it, but the idea is um, to allow the client to self-serve and fill in any information that you haven't taken from them yet. So this is basically a missing information screen. It's going to populate any information you've already added will already be there. Uh, and it's just going to ask the client to fill in the blanks, essentially. And they can add in as much or as little as they want. But it's a good opportunity to capture things like perhaps their national insurance number, um, their personal UTR number, uh, perhaps their previous accountant's details as well, if you're taking on a client from a previous accountant. So you actually automate the process of requesting the professional clearance from them as well. And then we'll continue. It's going to do the same thing for the limited company. So similar thing again, just fill in the blanks. Um, they can add as much or as little as they want. As I say, it's not compulsory to fill in any of the fields. Any fields they do fill in will be updated on Accountancy Manager for you, so you don't have to manually put that data in. Um, it will be logged on the client timeline that that information's changed, and it will also um, give you a notification within the software that the information's been updated as well. Uh, so this is the actual portal itself. Um, so very straightforward to use. Um, it can be branded with your own company logo and colors as well. So the accountancy manager banner at the top, for example, you can change this, uh, replace it with your own logo and your own background colors or images as well. Um, the welcome text that you can see here just generates from a template. So you can change this as well. The default is just some welcome information, as you can see, uh, but you could change this to be whatever you want it to be. Uh, and then you've got the client portal itself just here. So it's very, very easy for clients to share documents with the accountant. It's just a drag and drop process. And obviously any documents that have been uploaded by the accountant for the client will also be vis visible in here as well and be able to download them. Um, I can also view upcoming deadlines as well. So if you've got clients that are always asking you what their deadlines are, they can actually log into the portal and view them themselves here. Um, and a new feature as well we've added is the tax liabilities. So they can actually see, as long as the accountant has filled in the amount in the client file, they'll be able to see um, how much they owe and when they're due to be, uh, when the deadlines are for the um, upcoming tax payments. So things like CT600 um, and uh, self-assessment and so on. It will actually give um, the deadline date and the amount due to be paid as well in here. So that's the client portal just there. And just, just before you go on, Neil, Andrew's yep. asked, once the client has received the engagement letter with the monthly fee, 
is there a link to set up a monthly direct debit to cover the fees or is that uh, something you have to there, do outside there isn't the, there isn't built in but if you've got um you know if you if you use um go cardless or something like that you could put your link into um into the letter into the um proposal for example and just drop in your your payment link for them to set up the uh the payment yeah there's nothing stopping you from doing that okay thank you all right Okay, so at this point now, our new client is now a fully fledged, fully onboarded client on the system. All their tasks are generated and showing on our task list here. Um, and as as I say, because we allocated some of those tasks to another staff member, we can actually view, as long as we've got the permission to, we can view that staff member's tasks as well. We can see that the jobs have automatically been allocated out to the relevant staff members. Now, the task list itself, very, very useful. Uh, by default, it will list all the tasks in deadline order, and it will keep these all updated for you. So when you complete one, it will automatically move forward to the next deadline date. Um, so, for example, with the VAT quarters, when you complete one, it will just move forward to the next VAT quarter automatically. You can sort and filter the tasks in various different ways. Um, so uh, you can filter by the progress against the task, or you could filter by what service. That's very useful, say, in January when you would just want to be focusing on self-assessments. You can hide all the other tasks and just focus on those. Uh, you can also filter by client type as well. Now, it's only showing, obviously, um, limited companies and self-assessments because that's all I've got in my account at the moment. If you did have some partnerships or some charities and so on, uh, they'd be listed here as well, and you'd be able to sort by them as well. Um, I can also sort, so I, as I say, the, the default is by deadline, but I could also sort by records received, which would float all of the tasks that are showing as records received to the top of the list for me. Uh, I can filter by 30-day deadlines and then records received, so I can see kind of what's most urgent for me to work on, and then what I can also start working on when I finish those tasks as well. Uh, and I can also mark tasks as favourites, that's what these little stars are for. So if I make a task a favorite, it's just telling the system I want to pay a bit more closer attention to those tasks. So I can then either um, bring the favorites to the top of the list or I can show just my favorites and hide all the other tasks if I want to as well, uh, which is really, really useful. Now, the task list is very much tied to the automation within Accountancy Manager as well. So as I alluded to earlier on, when a period end date comes around, whether it's a VAT quarter or a year end date or whatever it needs to be for, for whichever particular service it's reminding, um, that can then, if you've got your automation switched on, start automatically reminding the clients to send in their records to you uh, to make sure that you get them in a timely manner to then go ahead and complete the task. Um, you do have control over um, the frequency of the emails. If we just go into the automation settings here, I'll show you. So you've got your automatic records requests just here. So we'll turn them on first of all. And then for each service, this is the number of days after the period end that a reminder will go out to the clients. You can change these numbers to be whatever you want them to be. These are the system defaults. Uh, but let's say if I wanted to add an additional one on the VAT records request at 21 days, I could do that, do so easily like that. Um, and what will happen is when it starts emailing the clients asking for the records, it will automatically update the tasks on the task list to say records requested. So let's use this one as an example here. Um, this VAT submission here. So it will automatically update it to say records requested. Um, and that's basically the system telling you that it started sending the emails out to the client for you. Once you've received the records from the client, you can then go ahead and mark it as records received. And what that's doing is telling the system you've had all the records in for that from the client for this, this task now uh, and stop sending any further reminders out. So it will stop sending, even if it hasn't reached the end of the list of, of uh emails it will stop emailing that client about that task because you've told it that you've received all the records what you could also do if they've sent you incomplete records is you have a part records received option here as well so if you select this it will actually ask you to tell it what records are still missing so you can type in uh, bank statements for example let's say july 2020 um, and it will take exactly what you've typed and drop it into an email and remind the client to send you just those pieces of information as well. 
Um, and again, once they then come back to you with the missing information, uh, you just update it to records received and that stops any further reminders going out. You've also got things like uh, queries requested as well. So if you've asked the client a question and you need an answer before you can go ahead, um, that will then start sending reminder emails to the clients and come back to you with the answer to your question. And once you've received it, you go queries received and that stops sending out the reminders. Um, and again, once you've completed the relevant task, it will automatically move that forward to the next um, period end for you. So we'll do the preparation and the submission there. And that's telling us the tasks have been completed on the system. So when we next load the task list, we'll find that those tasks have jumped forward to the next deadline date automatically. We also have, and then this is another new feature, target date. So the deadline date is going to be the ultimate submission date is when it has to go to Companies House or HMRC or wherever it's got to go to. Um, but you can also have now your own internal target dates. So, so this will be when you want to have the job completed by. Um, so if you if you have a policy of you know um, making sure that all your that all your um, tax returns are done, you know three weeks before the deadline date, for example, you can set your own internal targets for those. Uh, and again, you can set them manually, or you can actually tell the system how to calculate them. So if you go into your account settings, you've got your target dates here. Uh, and there's a couple of different ways you can have it calculate them. So it can be number of days after the task has been marked as records received. It could be number of days after the period end for that particular service or number of days before the deadline date. So we can then go here. Let's say we want it, we want it to be done before the deadline date. And we can go down and we can say by each service, how many days before the deadline we want the target date to be. So um, let's use VAT as an example. If we say we want to have all that returns done 21 days before the deadline, uh, that's going to adjust the target dates accordingly. And we just do the same for each service um, and make sure if we've made any changes, we update them for existing tasks as well as new tasks. Um, and we just go save settings. It's going to give us a warning um, that we're overwriting the existing target dates. And then if we go back out to the task list, we'll now find that it's set all of those target dates according to what we told it in the settings. So our VAT returns are all going to be 21 days before the deadline. Everything else are left at seven days. So that's now what it's using. Um, and I can change the sorting to be by target date instead of by deadline date as well. So that's your task list. Uh, you can also log Neil. I've just I've just got a couple of questions. Well, I've got four questions that have yep. come in. I'm just I'm conscious of the time as well. Yeah, no, no us. worries. So, yep. Uh, Chris, Chris has asked, can you set automation by client or is it set for the practice? So can you do those automation dates? So the automation settings here are practice wide. They're the default settings, but once you've turned them on, you can then go into individual client and change them specifically for just that client. They must be turned on on the global settings first, and then you'll have this automation tab within your client file here where you can go in and actually customize them on an individual basis. So simple answer to that is yes. You just need yep. to, to do that extra step. Brilliant, thank That's you. That's right, yeah. Um, and then Kaff has asked, if the records received from the client are in hard copy, can you record what they are, i.e. a red lever arch file, and where those records are being kept? So I'd imagine that's a note. You could put a note in somewhere. Yeah, there. so there's various places you can add notes. I'd probably recommend adding them to the client timeline. Um, so you could put in a note saying something like uh, records received from clients um, and where they're being stored and so on. Um, but yeah, you could add, you know, you could add a note to the just the main notes section. Um you could scan the documents in when you've received them and upload them if you wanted to have a digital copy of them, whatever you wanted to do, really. But yeah, but um, my recommendation would be to just make a note on the client timeline. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then Daniel's asked, is there a way to only email all of your self-assessment clients with a generic form chasing the SA information or self-assessment information? Uh, and likewise for the VAT? Um, uh, yes, you could certainly email them by filtering the client list, like we well, like we did earlier. Yeah, so you could filter to just your SA clients or just your VAT clients, or you could actually use um, custom form and then place it in those clients' portals. So you can actually create your own forms. You can see we provide a self-assessment checklist uh, as an example form, 
Um, so what you could then do is place that into the relevant client's um, portal and they, they'd be chased to actually populate the, uh, the form. Okay, brilliant. And then Andrew's asked, if you operate two accountancy practices under two separate brands, can you have both brands in one copy of Accountancy Manager with obviously different logos, or would you have to have two licenses? Uh, you would need to have two separate accounts, really. Each, each account is built to, to look after one practice. Um, if it was the same set, if it was the you know essentially the same set of staff just working under two brands, um, obviously you could have a chat with us about the pricing for that, but each account is essentially designed to cater for one uh, one practice. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm aware of the time. Um, I apologise. There's a lot to go through on the system, but I will try and just very quickly show you uh, a couple of our other new features that we've added. So. Um, time logging is something that's always been available within Accountancy Manager, uh, but you now have the ability to pause your time log as well. So let's say you're doing your work uh, for a client and you get interrupted by a phone call. It's very easy now to pause your time log, deal with that, um, and then come back to it and restart the time log when you're ready to continue. We've also added, um, I mentioned earlier on, the, under the AML checking, it's now possible to do as well as just an AML check. You can do a credit screen against your clients as well. Um, so you can do an individual credit screen against a person, or you can do a company credit check as well. Um, so again, you go new check and then company credit check here. Uh, so the way it works with the, uh, the AML, it's similar to the SMS. So you buy credits in advance um, and then they sit on your account until they get used up. Um, the different types of checks use different numbers of credits as well. So a standard AML check is one single credit. Uh, if you also wanted to do a credit screen, that would be one additional credit. So it'd be two credits for the ID check and the credit screen. And if you were to do a company check, then it's uh, four credits for a company check. You're also able to do international checks now, but the cost of those vary depending on the country that you're doing the check on. Um, as we started to mention earlier on as well, there are custom forms. Um, so they basically allows you to build your own form within Accountancy Manager and then choose which clients it's applicable to um, and what type of client it is. So, for example, the, the gentleman earlier that was asking about, can you do a self-assessment form? Uh, yes, you can. Um, as I say, we do provide an example form, which happens to be a self-assessment form, uh, but you could also build your own and then choose um, for self, um, that it's for a self-assessment client. And you can put it for existing clients, and also optionally for new clients as well, if you wanted to, uh, then all you'd have to do is save that. And then the form would appear in those clients portals ready to be um, completed. Uh, another new feature that we've added in, uh, in the last couple of weeks is the system will now warn you when a client has had four records requesting email sent to them and the task hasn't been marked as records received then the system will actually send you a reminder to say, hey, you might want to chase this client up. They've had four reminders now and you still haven't had a response. Uh, you've also, within your automation, got things like tax payment reminders as well. So you can remind your clients to pay their tax on time. Uh, you've got reminders for unsigned documents and uncompleted custom forms as well. Uh, and there's your deadline day SMS message that I mentioned right at the very beginning of the demo as well. Uh, I think what I'll do in the interest of time is I'll stop there, Simon. Uh, if anyone wants a more detailed demo, then we can we will be happy to arrange that for them. Uh, but that's pretty much covered um, some of the newer features that we've added to the system that people might not have seen. So I think that's probably a, a good place to stop. Brilliant. Excellent. There's just a couple of questions, if we can, Neil. Can yep. you file confirmation statements to Companies House from within Accountancy Manager? Uh, you can't file them, um, but the system will pick up when they have been filed because it links in with Companies House and it checks the information um, against the clients on a daily basis. So once it's been submitted and Companies House have received and updated the deadline date to the following year, it will pick up that change of deadline date in Accountancy Manager, uh, but it doesn't do any kind of submission or anything like that. 
okay so it'll do all the will do all the automation aspect of it via company's hair so it'll know when the confirmation statement's got to be filed it, and all the rest of it it will know when f- yeah it will it'll pick up the deadlines um, yeah. and it will know when the deadlines are changed but it doesn't do the actual submission excellent thank you uh, and then chris has asked is there a function to track communication such as telephone calls from clients to various team members or would you just update notes um, it would be a case of updating notes for telephone calls. Um, yeah, it doesn't integrate with any telephone systems. There is, um, again, on the client file in the timeline, there is um, an option to, to note a telephone call. Um, and there's also an internal notification system as well. So let's say if you've taken a call um, from one of your colleagues' clients and you wanted to drop them a message to say that they've called, you can actually send internal notifications within the system. So I could send a notification to one of my clients saying... Uh, so to one of my colleagues saying your client just called they asked about this you know see the notes for for more information or whatever um and then they can obviously refer to the uh, the note on the timeline you've got there the option to uh, to note a call log and you can even time it as well if you want to excellent and does it will it um and this is something that we've struggled with for a little while at greenstones will it automatically re- remind you if that if that telephone call hasn't been returned or hasn't been completed in some way um, not the call, no, because all it's doing is it's just logging that a call was was taken. Um, like I say, the notifications is probably the best way of dealing with that. So you can send notifications to each other. You can also make them urgent as well, uh, which actually puts them as a, a red box on the screen. So if I, if I send myself a notification here, um, I'll show you what it looks like. So I've sent myself a notification. If I just reload my screen now, that's what an urgent notification looks like in Accountancy Manager. So it's a red box on the screen and it won't go away until you've dealt with it. So you have to click on it to read it and then choose an action. Um, So you can archive it. You can create yourself a task from it. You can respond to it or forward it on to another staff member. But you must do something with it in order for that to disappear. Okay, brilliant. So they could, if, if it was, say, taken, the telephone call was taken by somebody, they could hit the mm-hmm. respond button to confirm that they've made the return yeah. the call, for example. And then exactly, that person yeah. would know that that task has disappeared. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Uh, and then just a last question. Um, uh, and then I've got a question. Uh, so Andrew's asked, uh, say you get a GDPR request, are there any means of getting content out of notes and or phone logs um, out of AM? And I, I think you said at the beginning, uh, Neil, that is all exportable. Yes, uh, yeah. So even if there's no export button, um, our support team would be able to get that data for you if you asked for it. Um, and I think the um, the client timeline, um, first of all, you can search and sort and filter it. Um, and I think also it is exportable as well. Uh, bear with me a second. Just load up the client timeline. So there's, again, there's no export button on the timeline, but you can ask our support team to get you an export of that, no problem whatsoever. Um, or, you know, if you just needed to respond to something, you can filter it and search for the information that you want and then just do a screen grab and then, um, you know, use that as um, as your evidence, or whatever you need. Um, but as I say, if, if you need a, a full export, our support team would be happy to help you do that. Okay, thank you. And then just briefly, how is it priced, Neil? Is it priced per user, per client? Is it just a standard figure? It's a per user price, so it's unlimited number of clients. Um, You just pay for the number of users that you want on the system. Uh, Standard price is £39 plus VAT per user per month. Uh, We do offer a uh, 20% discount if you choose to pay on an annual basis as well. Um, And we do also quite often have offers for uh, members of different accounting bodies um, to get a discount for their first year as well. Excellent. Thank you. So uh, there's obviously a massive amount of uh, information and uh, there's got to be a posh IT phrase for usability or content. What's the, what's the <laughs> word I'm searching for, Neil? Functionality. Is functionality, probably, that's probably the one. Yeah, yeah. Let's go for fun. I've had a challenge yeah. with words for the last 90 minutes. So why should it finish uh, any different today? So uh, for people to find out more, to book a demonstration, an individual demonstration, or to ask you or your team any questions, uh, Mark's just put a uh, comment in the chat box uh, to www.accountancymanager.co.uk forward slash uh, sign up is that that's the best place for them to go yep so they can sign up for a free 30-day trial 
of the system. Um, if they want to speak to anyone from the team before signing up for the trial, they're more than welcome to contact us. You can send us an email or give us a call and have a chat on the phone. It's entirely up to you. Excellent. Uh, and then just Andrew's asked a question about training. It's, it's a good question. It's one that I should have asked. So uh, how is the training provided? Is there a setup process for new users? Are you so, yeah, we, we try and provide as much support as possible. So you can see at the top of my screen, uh, there's a need help box that pops out. Um, and there are quite a few tutorial videos and walkthrough guides available in here on setting it up. There's also a um, setup checklist as well to help you make sure that you're setting it up correctly. Uh, we can also arrange a live demonstration for you as well once you've signed up for a free trial. Uh, and our support team are happy to help with any questions or um, issues that you might have. Brilliant. So lots of support uh, all the way through. That's excellent, uh, Neil. Thank you. And Jonathan's just popped uh, an email address and a telephone number uh, in the chat box as well. So we are now bang on uh, 12 o'clock. We haven't got any more questions in the system. So uh, that just leads me to say a big thank you to uh, Neil for coming along and showing as accountancy manager and for Jonathan at the beginning uh, sharing where we are with accountancy manager. There's a slight tongue-in-cheek question come through as well earlier from Mark around uh, whether you've got any plans to change your name. Uh, AKA like Receipt Bank have done this morning without uh, t telling anybody, it appears. Uh, so uh, you've not got, got got any plans to change the name, Neil, have you? I'll, uh, I'll let Jonathan answer that one. He's our marketing <laughs> uh, executive. So No, we haven't got any uh, plans to change our name. We, we, we love our name. We love our, our, our green branding as well. So we're sticking with it. Brilliant. So th thank you, Neil. And thank you, Jonathan. And as always, uh, thank you to the community members that have come along uh, to listen to Neil and Jonathan today and ask uh, such great questions. As I say, as always, uh, the questions that come up, um, I think, adds value to the wider community rather than if you just have a one-to-one uh, -one demonstration. So uh, that's it for us uh, this morning. Uh, so thank you, Neil. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Simon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this recording of the Accountancy Manager demonstration. I'm sure you found it as useful as what I did. Please remember to subscribe to this channel so you get notified of future videos that we upload. Remember to like this video. And also, if you have any comments or questions, please just pop them in the comments below and we'll come back to you as soon as we can. You should now see on your screen somewhere down the bottom the next two videos that we recommend you watch in order to continue to be inspired, challenged and supported by the Accountants Mastermind.